What's going on guys? This is Burrs. I'm here with Nate Murray, the inventor of the Grip Stop. And he's going to run me through some of his uh, personal drills he does as far as vehicle uh, confines and shooting uh, with uh, threats that are coming at you. So uh, what are we going to do here today? We're going to go over a couple different drills that I do personally on my own time here at my private range. And uh, it's stuff that I've collected over the years from various different trainers. So it's stuff that uh, I, I practice when I have the opportunity. All right, we're gonna go through just some basic things about shooting out of the vehicle and bailing out of a vehicle, right? Vehicle CQB, fighting in, out, around vehicles, whatever, that's kind of like in vogue right now. But the thing is people are like, oh, well, this only applies to cops or this only applies to military or whatever. But you think about it as like a private citizen, how much time do you spend in your automobile, right? Like we all have cars. We, we spend a lot of time driving to work, coming back from work stopping at the gas station. So the likelihood of getting into a gunfight around a vehicle, I mean, it's there, you know, it's definitely there. So understanding like the nuances behind a vehicle, I mean, why not learn that, right? So I've had the opportunity to learn uh, how, to, how to fight out of vehicles in the military. I've received additional training from Matt Graham, from Graham Combat, from Jared Ross, from Aqua Tactical, uh, from Will Petty. I just went to Will Petty's vehicle CQB class uh, just a little bit over a month ago. So in my civilian life, I've had more training opportunities to train in round, you know, through vehicles uh, than, than I definitely did in the military, right? And if you ask me, I mean, there, it's probably more relevant to me now as a private citizen than it even was when I was in the military and I was deployed overseas, right? There's a little bit difference between bailing out of a vehicle with four other dudes with machine guns in Iraq than me bailing out of a vehicle uh, to defend my own life or bailing out a vehicle with my friends or family or loved ones and, and what it means to be in a vehicle. So what I'm going to show you in no way takes the place of actually seeking formal training uh, with one of these instructors that are, are teaching vehicle CQB or teaching how to fight out of a vehicle or around a vehicle. Uh, Burrs will go ahead and put the links in uh, the comment section for you guys to check it out. Like I said, there's some good guys out there. They're teaching good solid information. And for me, as somebody that gets to train a lot, what I see is mostly consistencies in everybody's program. There's some small differences, like there might be a difference between uh, a cop's perspective versus a soldier's perspective. There might be a perspective difference, but overall the, the techniques are pretty much the same. And that's what I look for when I train for a certain skill set from numerous people, is I, I like to see the, the comparison. I like to see the, the similarities and the differences and generally, if I see three or more instructors I, that I respect telling me to do something, well, that's what I call a clue, and that's generally what I'll start trying to train on my own to really vet it for myself. And like I've said before, like just because you see something or somebody tells you something, it doesn't mean you take it blindly. If you have the opportunity to go verify it for yourself, you definitely want to do that. So here we are. I'm lucky, you know, here at Casa Mur that I can set it up with my vehicle with this fine specimen of 99 Ford Ranger that I can practice shooting out of my vehicle whenever I want, right? Next, we're gonna talk about just some basic things. There's, a, there's gonna be some artificialities about this exercise here, but we're gonna go over some just basic tenets of what you can do uh, to fight out of the vehicle, right? So depending on how you carry your gun, it's gonna determine your draw, right? So right now I'm carrying a Glock 19 appendix, and because I'm carrying appendix, that's gonna determine the way that I draw my gun, right? So with my seatbelt on, what I can do is I can pull my gun up, my shirt up, get to my gun, right? And then I can sweep around the steering wheel, being careful not to flag myself, and I can punch out and engage the target to my left, right? So in doing that, it's really easy to flag your legs, right? So you have to be careful. So if I'm driving with my legs somewhat close together, something I might want to do is when I start to do my draw, I spread my legs. So as soon as I draw that gun, I'm not pointing at my own leg, right? So from here, it's very easy for me to punch out the window. Alternatively, what I can do is I can come up and kind of trace it around the steering wheel, depending on how close my seat is to the steering wheel, right? So your, your body size, your mode of carry, all these things are coming into play just for your presentation, right? For me, because I'm reacting to a threat, the most important thing for me is to react to that threat and engage that threat, right? So right now, my priority in life is to draw my weapon, present on target, and put rounds on target, right? So that starts with my draw, pull out, and I can engage, boom, 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 right? Uh, 
obviously I'm compromising my shooting position, right? I'm not in that ideal shooting position that I would have standing. And that's just something you have to work around, right? That's just the reality of it. So for this, because I have my seatbelt on, all right, boom, 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 boom. I engage my threat. Well, now what I can do is I can keep my weapon oriented downrange at the threat, and I reach over with my support hand, and now I can release that, that seatbelt, right? So now that I have the seatbelt rele released, now I can get out of the vehicle. I don't want to be inside the vehicle, right? So this is assume that I can't just drive away from this threat, which would probably be my best option realistically, or if the threat's in front of me, I would just run that threat over. So we're assuming that I cannot do that, and that's why I'm forced to fire my weapon out of the window. So I, I ditch my seatbelt, my support hand is what I use to ditch that seatbelt. Next, my support hand comes up, and I'm careful to go underneath my weapon to hit the door latch and be able to release the door latch so I can bail out the vehicle. So from here, if I need to, I can re-engage the threat, but what do I want to do? I want to put distance and cover between me and the, that threat target. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, we're going to go live. Now I'm going to go through this really slow just so you can see the sequence of things I need to do before I can even fire my weapon. Driving along, I'm stuck in traffic. I'm at a stoplight, there's a car in front of me, whatever it might be. I look over, I perceive a threat, right? Whatever, the, somebody shot at me, I see somebody running towards my vehicle with a weapon, whatever it might be, whatever scenario you want to be in. I look over, I identify, I immediately come down, pull my shirt up, draw my pistol, bring it around, being careful not to flag, flag my legs. I'm gonna lean into it, align my sight, engage that threat, right? With my support hand, I'm gonna come back, release the seatbelt, swim on that seatbelt, open the latch to the door, bail out of the vehicle. If I need to re-engage, I can do that from here. Alternatively, I can go get a, put some distance and cover between me and the threat. So I'm gonna come back here to the vehicle. So the main thing is, don't flag yourself or any of the passengers in your vehicle. You engage the threat and then, and then disembark from the vehicle, right? I don't want to sit here in this box stationary if I don't have to. So if that means driving away, forcing my way out of that, that traffic pattern or just abandoning the vehicle in entirety, that's going to be up to you to decide what you want to do with it. <clears throat> Put your seatbelt on, nasty. Yes, sir. All right. So you got your seatbelt on. Your weapons on low, you're gonna do a dry run, right? So yeah. I'm just gonna walk you through it real quick, right? All right. So you got your hands that uh, attended to, you're driving along, rocking out the Miley Cyrus, whatever it is you do when I'm not around, all right? You look over to your left, you perceive that threat, all right? So what you wanna do is take your support hand, just abandon the steering wheel. Take your support hand, pull your shirt up, and get to your weapon. Draw your weapon, now as you do that, be careful not to flag your own legs as you present the weapon. So if you come up high, like point towards the windshield, and just sweep it over, and then lean forward and engage the target. So boom, 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 you engage the target. Now keep the gun pointed down range. Like keep it pointed there. Boom, now boom, with your support hand, you can come in, release the uh, seatbelt, and now find the latch of the door, bail out of the vehicle, re-engage as necessary from there. Boom, boom, boom. Now create distance and cover between you and that target. Very good. Yeah. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. So the thing is, it's a bunch of different things. I mean, it's a sequence of events that you basically have to compartmentalize to be able to do successful, right? Mm -hmm. So the main thing is not flagging yourself, not shooting yourself, and not shooting my truck burrs without shooting my truck. It's probably the most important the part point next to not shooting you point. or me. The point shooting is my shoot truck, truck is not the point of this. So go ahead, still go, make it, make it hot. All right, I'm gonna do a dry run full speed. All right, do a dry run full speed. On your own, without my assistance. Ready? I thought, you were, I thought I was going to do that. Well, I'm going to give... All right. I'll give you the threat command, okay? All Let's right. make it easier. Driving. Threat! Engage, engage. Engage, engage. Wow, is that good? Yeah. Okay. The thing is, like, once you clear it appendix style, just bring it straight up. It's like, bring it straight up. Straight up. If you're too close to the steering wheel, then trace the C around the steering wheel. Like, over-exaggerate. Like, point it out a little bit to the right, trace around the top of the steering wheel and out the window. The biggest thing is don't fucking point at your leg. It's so easy to point at your femoral artery, and that's the big thing. Well, so I'm that's why, like, going slow the first time. I understand that. I'm just explaining this to you. No, right? I'm just... I'm saying, like, that's the big thing, is not flagging yourself on your presentation. Are yeah, you the presentation running in or, or what? Legs out. Start with yeah. your legs in a little bit, so that you for, like consciously think about spreading your legs. Okay. Not like earlier. Are you live or no? Yeah. Are you doing this hot? Yeah. All right, very good. All right, just go slow. Go slow in this run. All right. All right, stand by. 
you're driving, you come to a stop, traffic, look left, threat! Very good, do that again. Seatbelt's a bitch. It is a bitch, right? Bitch! Like a, a concealment garment, like Matt Jaquey says, the cover garment's a bitch. Adding a seatbelt to the thing, it makes it even worse. It's even more of a pain in the ass trying to draw with a seatbelt. Well, I've seen some people instruct where you take the seatbelt off first. Some people do that. Is that another technique? That's another could technique of doing it, right? Okay. Drive and drive, drive and come to the stop. You're blocked in, look over, see a threat. Threat! Reload, reload, reload. I don't have a fucking second mag. Why do you not have a second mag? No, I don't have one on me at the moment. Why would you not have a second mag on you? Fair. Care, put it in your fucking pocket. It is. Oh, Jesus. All right, never mind. All right, just fucking run. We'll have this fight off camera. No. All right. So, all right, so check this out, right? You just came from a direction, right? How do you know if the bad guy doesn't have a buddy across the street? You just watched, he just watched you smoke his best friend, all right? So, this is going slow, but one thing we want to consider is that 360 degrees, there could be another threat, right? So, after you engage that threat, what I want you to do is I want you to retract back in and just go to Temple, temple Index, right? And from Temple Index, I want you to do a 360 degree search before you debark, uh, debark the vehicle, okay? Yeah. So, we're going to go slow, like, I'll, I'll slow you down once you engage the target. I'll remind you, right? So, so what I'm doing is engage a target, temple, and search. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Stand by, driving along, come to the stop, you're blocked in, look left. Threat! Now come back in, temple index, 360 degrees, right? Now look at me. If there was a threat crossing the street from where I am, right, off the right hand side of the vehicle, from that position, you could punch out and gauge. Right. Out the passenger side window, right? Yep. Or if the threat was coming from the front of the vehicle, you could punch out and shoot from the front. You can even twist all the way around and shoot out the back of the vehicle if you had to. Now you've done your search and assess 360 degrees, now you can release your seatbelt, right? You decide that at this point it's better to bail out of the vehicle than to drive off, keep it at temple index, and then put distance and cover between you and the target you already engaged. I just want you to do what, exactly what you've been doing, which is identifying a threat, engaging the threat with however many rounds you want, like five rounds, whatever it might be. Get out of the vehicle, right? And then create distance and cover with that vehicle. So go to the rear of the vehicle, right? And you can choose, this is a choose your own adventure book, right? Do whatever the fuck you want. You can re-engage the target using the building as cover, right? Or you can come back around and you can engage high the corner of the building here engage the target again or you can punch hard and use the a-frame pillar here as cover and shoot right so i want you to engage from the vehicle and at least two different positions outside the vehicle so three different engagements yeah. of like three to five rounds per engagement right yeah. understand don't shoot my truck it's a classic i'm gonna go slow the first time we go slow all right all right stand by so driving along look left Very good. So, all right, go ahead and unload your gun. All right, weapon's clear. Are you sending the slide forward? All right, pull the trigger. All right, very good. So gun's empty, I confirmed it's empty. All right, get back in the vehicle, or reholster, get back in the vehicle. All right, this is what I want you to do. Like, this is like, everybody's always like complaining about like, oh, Temple Index, or whatever you want to call it, right? Like, is it a viable system, or is it not a viable system? It's actually a really old technique that fell out of grace for a while and it's back in. And it makes sense, I use it, it makes sense, right? So the thing is, it's not a, just a vehicle-centric thing. It's also useful when there's a bunch of people and obstacles in your way, right? So like a crowded mall or a crowded movie theater, whatever it might be, where I don't want to flag myself and I don't want to flag anybody around me, so having up here in the ceiling is really hard to flag, right? What I want you to do is, I'm going to be an obstacle for you, 
and EJ is going to be an obstacle for you. What I want you to do is you're going to notionally engage the target, come back in, go to Temple Index, search and assess before you get out of the vehicle, because you don't know what's around you right now, right? You got fixated on this engagement, so you're going to assess, see what's going on, and you're going to decide that you're going to, you're going to bail out of the vehicle, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to notionally re-engage in the sequence that you just did live fire, but I want you to go back to Temple Index in between because I'm going to be an obstacle. So you're going to see, like if I get flagged, it, you know, I don't want to, but if I get flagged, I'm going to flag with an empty gun, right? We just confirm it was unloaded. But you're going to see the value in that a little bit more, I think, right? You ready? Stand by. Right. Bang, bang, bang. I'm just an innocent bias bang, bang, I'm out bang. of my So if I'm in your way, just get me out of your way. Bang, bang, bang. So do you see like the value in that technique that yeah. I would have carried? A lot of people don't know think it's fucking stupid, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Especially it's like- What does in these tight situations like cars? Yeah. Clear. Clear. So the other aspect of it, so like just I'm running through the crowded mall, so it's so much easier for me to do this and then come around you guys with this here. I'm not flagging you or myself at any point, right? right. And here's the cool thing about it is that when I, when I need to engage from here, I'm running through this crowd, it's just a matter of boom, 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 push out and pull it back up, right? Alternatively, going from the low ready, right? So push your hand out, right? So I want you to stick hand out when you say push, right? Push, right? Here I am trying to bring my gun up to the threat, but your arm just got in the way. So by bringing up from the low ready, your body can move, your arms get in the way, whatever it could be. Like there's more potential for something to get in the way of me presenting my gun from the low ready, or even from like position of soul, like the whole fucking this bullshit, right? Ninja. Because what I gotta do, I gotta bring my hands up and, and push out, right? So it's just so much easier to like chop it down, just to bring it down. So, and here's the thing is I can generate more force. If somebody's arms in the way, fuck out of here, right? Chop the, like, smack your hands out of the way with, with your hands with, as you present on the target, right? So that's like the logic. I guess it's an, it's an assumption that if I'm receiving contact, no matter what the level, not to get out on the side of the vehicle, the contact is given. Right, but here's the deal. It's like, it's a time versus safety thing. Sure. If I'm trapped in the vehicle significantly longer, trying to crawl across the passenger side, mm -hmm. maybe I'm better off time-wise just bailing out of the vehicle passenger side. Right? So like if I'm on that X, if I'm in that kill zone, right? And they're just pouring a volume of fire, maybe I'm better off going the shorter route instead of the longer route. Alternatively, vehicles actually surprisingly do a pretty good job of stopping bullets, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you are better off leaving that door shut and escaping the vehicle from the passenger side. Right. That's the thing, like you wanna try them all. You wanna practice them all. Right. If you have a four door like SUV or a four door family car, like you want, if you have the opportunity to practice bailing out like the rear driver's side and the rear passenger side. You know, try every possible way that you can. You could just like ninja flip out and then do a front back in another truck. Ninja flip. I don't know if I'm flexible enough for that. If you think it's never been on YouTube, I bet it has. Somebody's out there doing it. Once you draw, like just come straight up, just exaggerate over the steering wheel, and then out in whatever position you want to be in. But instead of doing that crazy leg thing you're doing, I just want you to Turn. rotate All right, the tank I'll do it turret. your way. I want you to rotate the tank turret and shoot from that. Okay. Right? Driving along, look left, right. Nope. Boom, boom, boom. Bang, bang, bang. Re-engage. Bang, bang, boom, bang. Boom, boom. Yeah. Apple index. Okay. So you're driving along, rocking out the Miley Cyrus. I love look Miley left. Cyrus. Re-engage. Very good. Driving along. Right. Very good. That's perfect on the steering wheel. I just remember trace the C around the steering wheel. I want you to search and assess before you leave the vehicle, okay? All right, so search and assess before you leave the vehicle and then and then bail Until out. the rounds are out. Yep. Alright. Ready? Stand by. Right along and threat! Right. 
success. Yo, vehicle, re-engage. Temple index. All right, guys, so there's some uh, drills that Nate went ahead and showed me and uh, some techniques I've never done before. So I uh, definitely got a lot of knowledge here today. Um, how you wanna, we, we got to say at the end here. Well, like, like I said, I that just was my showed performance. You, no, like I, for, you said you never shot out a vehicle before. Yeah. I think you did really well. That was just like one tiny little slice of the pie when it comes to the shooting out of vehicles. Uh, in no way does it take the place of formal training. And like we said earlier, like Burris is gonna put some links for some guys you can go train and do vehicle stuff with. Before you go out and do it on your own, I definitely recommend that you go and seek formal training and learn from the pros for it. But uh, having, like I said earlier, trained vehicle through military and extensively private sector as a civilian, uh, because we're around vehicles all the time, that's why you see this as a, as a, dr a growing trend in the training field, in the training industry. Now, everybody spends time around automobiles, so why not learn how to use them to your, your advantage and what, what the capabilities and limitations are of shooting guns around vehicles. Yeah, and the thing I actually grabbed from this when we were going through it was the stuff I learned at Rockwell like a week ago, I was actually saying, oh, I could do this, oh, I could do that, because now I'm proficient in doing it. In different techniques and different positions as far as like shooting under the car and etc right so from going through that course and then kind of going up through to something like this right, yeah, like all the, it all comes together right like all the positional training like all the positional work that you do with carving uh shooting around barricades it's, it's the same stuff it's the same positions it's just a little bit different because of the the layout of the vehicle right the hard points on the vehicle that, that offer either cover or concealment to you right uh so you, you can expand off your existing training just by using a vehicle, right? Like, you don't have to shoot out a vehicle if you want. You can just use a vehicle, like old Junker or a classic Ford Ranger like this. Uh, and, doesn't you can, matter. and you can see what works for you and what, what doesn't. The most important thing is going slow and being safe. And that's true for all, all shooting. It doesn't matter what it is, right? Just going slow and being safe and thinking about what you're doing before you pull the trigger. And that's, that's how you keep from shooting your truck and that's how you keep from having an accident where you negligently you know, fire a weapon and hurt yourself or somebody else in the training area. Yeah. So just going slow until you gain confidence and then always consciously being aware. That's, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like shooting firearms are inherently dangerous in the first place just because of the nature of firearms. But now that I'm boxed into a vehicle, it's really easy to flag yourself and you have to be more aware of that than just standing you know, stationary on a square range where you know, the guns come out of the holster and go straight down range. Now my legs are in the way, my arm, I might flag my own hand if I do it out of sequence. There's a lot of moving parts to it. It makes it tricky, and that's why you want to see formal training for it. Yeah, cool. So, uh, thanks for watching uh, this interesting video on uh, shooting out of cars, drill, drills. And uh, if you guys have any comments or anything, go ahead and put them down below. Uh, if you guys go and get training and stuff, go ahead and put the comments down below where you guys have gotten training. And until next time, later. Drills, you show me some different techniques. Uh, definitely some stuff I've never done before. <laughs> I just felt awkward I didn't like that, do it again. I felt it was I, terrible. I felt dirty saying that. Fucking terrible. Again! <laughs> Only this time I want you to do it right. <laughs>